Hi, if you're a financial modeler, especially if you're building models for project finance or other structured finance transactions, you must be using XIRR or IRR very often. In this video, I'm going to show you the risks in using XIRR and why IRR is a better option and how to use IRR as a replacement for XIRR. So we use IRR to get the implied rate of return of a set of cash flows. So here I have five annual cash flows. And if I want to find out what is the implied rate of return, taking into consideration all the inflows and outflows, I could simply use the IRR function in MS Excel and I select the range of values, press enter, I get the annualized rate of return. But this formula assumes that each of the cash flows occur with exactly one year time gap. But what if the cash flows are not occurring in such a way? In that case, we could use the XIRR function. So here I have another example where the cash flows are occurring at different dates, not with exactly one year gap. In this case, Excel has the XIRR function. Conceptually, they are same, but this allows me to give the dates as an extra argument. So H7 to H11, where my cash flows are, I'll select that first. And then I'm going to select G7 to G11, where the exact dates are. I close the brackets and here I get the rate of return per annum using the XIRR function. Therefore, many financial modelers who build models on a quarterly or a monthly basis prefer to use XIRR function because it allows us to pass the date as an argument. But there is a risk. And let me illustrate this to you with another example. In this example, I have quarterly net cash flow forecast. The net cash flow is computed using operating cash flow, capex and net borrowings. If we were to get the IRR of this set of cash flows, when you use a simple IRR function, we do get the answer, but this could be a little misleading because this 4.8% is not a per annum return. This is a per quarter return because our cash flows here have one quarter gap. To avoid this problem or to get the annualized rate of return, many financial modelers use the XIRR function. So XIRR, we select the cash flows and then comma, then select the dates, close the bracket. We get 20.6 percentage, which is our per annum rate of return. But we could have also got the same 20.6 percent using our IRR function. This IRR, what we got is a quarterly IRR. So if we were to get annual IRR, what we could do is here is equals one plus our quarterly IRR. Keep in mind uh, here as four quarters. So I'm going to raise this to the power four. If we had monthly cash flows, we'll raise it to the power 12 because a year has 12 months. So one plus quarterly IRR to the power four minus one, which gives me answer as 20.7 percent. There's a small difference here. That's because the second calculation which we did assumes all quarters to be equally sized, whereas XIRR takes into consideration the actual number of days in each of the quarters. But problem with XIRR function is that it expects your first value to be a negative value. If your model parameters changes in any reason where the first cell in your XIRR calculation turns out to be zero or a positive number, we're going to have a problem. So in this case, let me just do one thing. The second year cash flow of 75, I'll split as 50 in the first year and 25 in the second year. You could notice that the XIRR function is giving us 0% as the answer. That's actually misleading because there is an investment that money goes out of our pocket and then we are getting a rate of return, which is more than this 90 that we are investing. So we have definitely earned a rate of return, but the XIRR is giving us zero as the answer or a wrong answer here. And that is because of the inherent limitations of XIRR. Most financial modelers, when they build financial models, especially in terms of corporate finance or project finance, it's set on a quarterly or a monthly or a half yearly basis and we could very well use the IRR function and overlay it with this annualization formula to get the correct rate of return. We did see that there was a little bit of a difference between XIRR and IRR, but that difference is so marginal that it's not going to be a deal breaker, especially in corporate finance models where you already have a lots and lots of approximation that's happening. So does that mean that XIRR is a completely useless function and we shouldn't be using it? Well, you can use XIRR function or you should use XIRR function when you're talking about financial transactions like lending, borrowing, where payments occur at a specific dates because there a small basis point difference could make a big difference for the overall company's profitability. Financial institutions make margins and basis points. So a few basis point difference could be really a deal breaker there. And their payments occur on a specific date. Unlike corporate finance where we are assuming all the payments or we are approximating all the payments to occur at the quarter end date. That's not the case in financial transaction. They do occur exactly on specific dates. 
So in those kind of transactions, you could use XIRR function rather than using IRR and then annualizing it. Hope you found the video useful. If you like the video, please click on the like button and do share the videos. And also, if you want to stay updated with quality content from our channel, please click on the bell icon so that you keep notified every time we publish a new video. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.